Are you tired of players telling you when they're going to have a short or long rest? Well, we're about to flip the script on them and we're going to tell them when it's time to go to bed. So I'm just going to clear one thing up right now. The whole idea that a short and long rest exists in Dungeons & Dragons blows my mind. You're talking to a guy who used to play D&D as a kid, and if I got hurt, scraped my knee, got stabbed by an orc, or breathed on by a dragon, I had to go back to town to get hit points. Either that or I had to have a good healthy supply of potions of healings or a cleric on hand. Now you're probably wondering why I'm messing around with rules that already exist and already function quite well. Why mess with a good thing, right? Well, one of the things that I enjoy most about Dungeons & Dragons is being able to bring a little bit of a sense of realism, but not just that, but a sense of unpredictableness and also a little bit of dread um, in with the games. When players start to have expectations and when they start to know how things are going to function perfectly within the game, that's my cue as a sign to maybe shake things up a little bit. By making short and long rest something that's a little bit unpredictable and not just a given, i.e. hitting that button, you're going to give a little bit more of a flavor to the game. Players will then start to wonder when their next rest is going to occur, as opposed to knowing when their next rest is going to occur. I think the first thing that needs to happen when you start talking about rest to players is specifically what their hit points translating into exhaustion means to them. Now, I'm not talking about the exhaustion game mechanic, but I'm talking about their bodies. So it's very easy for players, when they get caught up in the moment with Dungeons & Dragons, to start not thinking about how their players are reacting to their hit point loss. So if you want to look at hit point loss from maximum to zero, there's varying stages that an actual hero or character is going to go through. Most of those are going to happen within the sort of halfway range to their full hit points and to their minimum hit points. So we're going to focus on that specifically. But it's important that as a dungeon master, you actually tell them what their hit point damage is translating to as far as how they feel. That's going to help you sell the fact that you're going to be telling them that they're going to need to take a rest soon. If the players don't have any bearing on what their hit point number equals in relation to how they're feeling, they're not going to buy into the whole rest to begin with, and they're going to look at it as just a game mechanic to regain some hit points. The first effects of being tired come when the player has lost 25% of his or her hit points. Inform them that they need to make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. Now on a fail, the character must take a short rest, but they do gain the benefits of the rest. If the character succeeds, however, he or she may continue on adventuring, pushing past the fatigue that it might be suffering from. Now when a character reaches 50% of their lost HP, they have to make another constitution save, this time with a difficulty of 15. Now if they did push past fatigue on their last roll, they're going to get disadvantage on this roll. But again, if they fail, they have to take a minimum of a short rest, and of course, success gives them the choice to either rest or continue on. Now, I've purposely left out the next tier as I feel that players most likely are not going to resist taking a rest once they've lost like 75% of their hit points. But then again, players be players, right? So the next time your players tell you that they're not ready to take a short rest or a long rest, get them to run a few laps around the block and come back and tell you how they feel. Or you could just bust out the d20s and roll some constitution saving throws. Either way, I think it's time to put a little bit more of an emphasis on how players are feeling and not just how many hit points they have. Hope you guys are all having fun playing Dungeons & Dragons out there, and we'll talk to you soon. Before you go, I need your help. I'm trying to grow the exposure of what we do here at Maverick Games. My goal is to actually bring information to parents and students around the world in hopes that they can see gaming as a path forward for learning, academics, and even support of neurodivergency. Please subscribe, make sure you click on those notifications, and I hope that you'll find content here that will be helpful for you and maybe others. Thank you very much, and thanks for tuning in.